3.29.23. Let's talk about 2 Timothy 3.7. There's a little whirlwind here. And if you think about it, a little whirlwind can turn into a big whirlwind. We're in spring, but uh, <clears throat> we're going to be in a for a cold spell in the next few days here in the West. So 2 Timothy 3.7, ever learning and never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's a lot of people nowadays, especially when it comes to, to the Bible, to the Word of God. They don't have these con concrete things like, I know the Bible, you can't read anything about the Bible. They've never, they've never read the Bible. They've never even read one gospel. They've never read, never read that in a verse. They've never read Peter, James, and John, let alone Paul, or Timothy, or Corinthians, or 1st, 2nd, or 3rd James. Um, <clears throat> or John, excuse me, or James 1 5. James 1 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. There's tons of truth in the Bible. But where does the Bible come from? You know, a man or a woman can think for themselves, use common sense, like what's the origin of the Bible? Did it magically appear because of His Majesty King James? Well, most people seem to think so. And they don't even read the first page of the book. Where does the King James Version come from? Well, thanks to King James, we have it, who was the King of England. And uh, he was tired of being Catholic, submitting to the Pope of Rome, which England had done for hundreds of years, maybe even more than a thousand, right? Remember the Council of Nicaea, those that have done your research? What was the Council of Nicaea? Some people get together to decide what God was. Is he, is Jesus the Son of God, or there one thing? So there was a council of Nicaea, and I think it was in about 314 AD, and these eminent gospel scholars got together to decide God, decide who God is. Well, God is God, and if a bunch of men deliberate and come up with their own opinion of who God is, they might be right, they might be wrong. The council of Nicaea was wrong. Let's go back to King James Version, 1600s, right? So let's say you're King James. You got pretty much power. You can pick whoever you want. You can kill whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. You're sick of the Catholic Church. Maybe you want to have a new relationship. The Catholic Church, you got to get permission from Rome to have it. And he's thinking, hey, I'm king of England. I want to do my own thing. I want to be an independent thinker. Whatever King James was thinking. I wasn't him, but I've studied a little bit about him. And I've read the book that he put together called the King James Version. If you read the first page, I know this is way going out there to read the first page of the King James Bible because hardly anybody's done it. But King James got together a bunch of his scholars he thought were the best scholars. They picked a bunch of books out of hundreds of books. You know, there's there's all kinds of books that were not included in the King James Version of the Bible. Holy Scripture. You know, none of the Apocrypha is in there that I know of. So most of the Holy Scripture that was extant at the time of King James putting together his Bible is not in the King James Version. So common sense, you gotta figure that out if you're gonna use common sense and be a real true seeker of truth. But most people are Second Timothy 3, 7, ever learning and never, oh, I got it, I got it, I know the Bible, I know the Bible, really? Have you ever read it cover to cover? It's kind of difficult to labor through Numbers and Deuteronomy. Yeah, I've done it. Not right. I mean, I have, I've only read it twice. Once in English, once in Spanish. And to me, going to hell is reading the, the Pentateuch, the first five books. I mean, Genesis is super interesting because you cover like over a thousand years in a few chapters. But then you get bogged down into Numbers and Deuteronomy. Good luck. So most people that say they know the Bible don't know the Bible. They haven't read it, and they don't realize that King James put it together. So they fit 2 Timothy 3, 7. Ever learning and never able to come to knowledge of the truth. Like a very simple part of the Bible is um, very simple and direct. Book of Revelation. So that comes from, if you do your research, and we all have our, we can research wherever we want. I happen to believe that the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos in the Greek islands wrote the book of Revelations Whoa. in the year um, 90 AD. Okay. So he wrote it. It's a single book. King James decided to put it at the end of his Bible compilation. It's not the whole Bible. It's one book. It's the Revelations of St. John. 
the Apocalypse. Very important book, and I'm glad that King James threw it in there. But anybody that says you can't add to or take away from this book or the curses of this book will be added unto you. Yeah, John's talking about his book. Don't screw up my book, the Apocalypse. It's a very important book. He's not trying to look forward to King James and say, King James, you can't put in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You can't put the book of Ruth or you can't put in Song of Solomon, which frankly is uninspired. He's saying, this is my book. And it's, you know, thank I'm glad that uh, King James and his scholars decided to uh, call it the Apocalypse, you know, St. John. So, anybody that says you can't read more than the Bible or add to the Bible doesn't understand the word Bible or Biblios, which means compendium in Latin, right? And, you know, the Romantic languages, a lot of, of uh, languages are based in Latin. In fact, the Vulgate, when the Catholics gave the Mass for hundreds of years, it was in Latin, so people couldn't understand. They didn't know what they're doing. And if you don't submit to the Pope, you get boiled and all that kind of stuff, bad stuff. So God bless the King of England and the pilgrims for breaking away. The people that really broke away, they said, okay, we're tired of this Vulgate Latin stuff and Romish doctrine. And frankly, in England, we got to do what the King says or off with our heads, right? So we're out of here. And this this started like, you know, more than a hundred years before King James and all that. So these people, they started in Northern Europe and other places, and they came all the way across the ocean to get away from England and the Pope, bottom line. So they landed in America on the East Coast, right? And on the East Coast, um, they called the pilgrims. They had, they had a Bible that they used, okay? They didn't want to use the King James Bible, so they used what, what uh, you know, what they had, Pilgrim's Bible, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, bottom line is, there's, and some people know there's at least the King James folks were choosing from 777 books. There's 66 books in the Bible. It's a little over a thousand pages, but it's just one tiny bit of the Word of God. Use logic. Think about it. What God didn't talk to anybody here in the, in the in Americas. God didn't talk to other people. Jesus said it pretty clearly. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I'm, I must also seek out. Jesus goes after everybody. He's not just God to like one particular tribe. He's God to everybody on this earth, or He represents God. He's the Son of God, and that got all mixed up at the Council of Nicaea, right? Right. Got all mixed up there. So. Um, when you study, I, I reserve the right to read any holy scripture I want to and make my own determination if it's holy or not. So if the ancient inhabitants of this country put out scripture, I'm going to let myself read it. And I'm not going to listen to somebody who says, you can't read it. You can't read it. You're going to go to hell. Really? You're going to scream at me and yell that I'm going to go to hell if I read the word of God, something that you happen not to have figured out yet. Vamos. Fíjate vos. Mira. Que bulo de es esto. Ah, track home. <laughs> so, um, the Word of God is the Word of God, and all true prophecies are fulfilled. Just like, you know, I was reading the prophecy of, uh, the prophecy and vision of George Washington, that's going to come to pass. So, anybody that, in my view, and I know I'm telling the truth, because George Washington was telling the truth, if you read that vision, he's talking about our day. They call him the father of our country, founding father, a valiant man, fantastic man. And that's why I wanted to read those, you know? Felt compelled to read them, and I did. So it stands. I'm sure it's on YouTube, it stands. Okay, so I believe that there's a lot of the Word of God, and it's not all in the book of Revelations. It's not all in the Biblia, compiled by King James. And it's kind of useful to read the first page of the Bible, how Gene King James came around with that version. I have other versions, Schoenfeld, you know, I like to get the Pilgrim version. You know, it's one of the key things in there is Genesis. Look at the word Genesis, that means beginning. So you can read the first 10 pages of Genesis and be pretty hip to what's going on. But a lot of people haven't even read that. <laughs> and they're, they're thumping, they're thumping and they're saying, you, you gotta believe this, you gotta, and they haven't even read Genesis. And Genesis is pretty obvious. It's Adam and Eve, and it talks about how we got here. The other thing I was to say about talking about was genetics and DNA. So, but I'm going to leave it right now with what is Scripture, what is the Word of God, and how that fits in with the King James Version. 
And if I want to, I can, and I'll say this. I say these words in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.